Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I am Mike, and the Crow reboot trailers here, remake whatever, 2024, Bill Skarsgård, and the trailer's out. We're getting ready to watch it together, and we're going to break the entire thing down. If you guys don't know, they released these stills of what he looked like as the Crow, and oh dear God, I was not a fan of it. It was some of the most haunting things I've ever seen in my life. The face tattoos, he actually had a tattoo on the back of his neck that said, whatever. I'm like, dude, is this a... 12 year old angsty teen and then you hear that the director who did the snow white and the huntsman was like yeah you know we wanted to like base him off of stuff like you know little peep so that like 19 year olds could see themselves in him and i and like uh who was the other post malone and i'm like oh dear god why did you call him eric draven then like why not just do because the crow can be different characters it doesn't have to be eric draven right as we found out with the other movies before so if you're gonna do a new Crow movie and you're gonna change everything about him and give him a, a a gangster mullet or whatever high school high shit that was he had going on on top of his head, then why on earth are you calling him Eric Draven? So anyways, I'm getting myself upset, but I mean, just look at it. The trailer's here today. They released a tiny little teaser yesterday that kind of had some vibes of the girl with the dragon tattoo with David Fincher's opening to that, uh, him coming out of the blood. That's all it said. But, you know, there was no, like, mumble rap in the opening to that. So I was like, maybe there's a chance. Because sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I see that picture of him by the campfire with the crisscross haircut. And, dear, f f fuckle juices. But, anyways, I do love Bill Skarsgård. Stars guard and let's give it a chance. Let's see. Maybe maybe this is the hope. This is the thing. Maybe the trailer can make it better. Maybe. I've got my fingers crossed. Suck and fuck it and touch it. What's the first thing you liked about me? I thought that you were quite brilliantly broken. You feel like my person. You feel like my pus. You said that you're from London. I saw things. I shouldn't have seen any of it. Someone dies. A crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes something so bad happens that the soul cannot rest. Like that haircut. Until you put the wrong things right. You were given the power of a god. But you're running out of time to save her. It's big as fuck! Oh! I'm gonna kill them. Every single one of them. Killed you. Yeah, you did. We have a problem. He came for us. What? First impulse. Anger. It's not anger. It's love. What you become? You know that love promises only pain. You have no idea what hell awaits you. No, I do. How many people have you loved? I never be alone. Bro, is he wearing like? Jogging pants? Sorry, that last shot. As, his, as he walks away, 
He looks like he's wearing those really baggy jogging pants that get real tight around the ankles and then like a really small, like almost crop top hoodie, but it is a shadow. Or, or so, at some point I was like, oh, there's, there's like Ozzy in here, okay? So I, ex I honestly expected fucking shitty Machine Gun Kelly songs to come on or something uh, about halfway through this. And then it was like Ozzy Osbourne and I was like, oh, that's kind of surprising. But then all of a sudden it's like they pulled the switcheroo on me, you know? They tucked it back in and did the whole Magnifico to me because they were like, all of a sudden, it was, it was like you know, not I don't know, not rap music like R and B or whatever, modern whatever, which just again aesthetically is not the crow. You know what I mean? Like, and fine, you can say, hey, you're old, and like, yeah, I am old, and that's not fun for me to be old. But like, the crow was always you know like grungy. It was always it had a it had an aesthetic to it, which was in more ways than others, like kind of its thing, like that. They did such a good job. Alex Proyas for that first film did such a good job of creating a tone and an atmosphere. And City of Angels, despite how you feel about it, followed that up from the soundtrack down to, you know, some of the last details of it. And to switch that up and make him and take the same character and again, make him kind of gangster ish, like he has a SoundCloud and then like change the music and that whole vibe up. I'm still not a fan of that. But I will say, from that picture to where I sit in this seat right now, because of the sheer size of Skarsgård, he's big as fuck. Like, damn, I'm impressed. Like, he is huge, and he is, that is one thing that really, I mean, Brandon Lee was Brandon Lee, and he was super talented as an actor and physical ability-wise with karate or martial arts and all that shit. But, you know, to see a crow be, it's like the Rob Zombie version of the crow from top to bottom, really. But to see a version of the crow that's like that physically intimidating is pretty cool. I, I Again, I, I can't stand the face tattoos and the aesthetic is always going to be, no matter how good the movie is, that aesthetic of seeing that guy run around with a mullet and face tattoos is just going to be, it's just going to take away from the movie no matter how you cut it the fuck up. You know what I mean? So that part's very weird for me, and it always will be, but foregoing that and hoping that, you know what I'm happy about? I'm super pumped, and I'm just going to be honest with you. Joel Kinnaman, Robocop. Part of the thing that ruined that was when he was like, yo, dead or alive, you're coming with me, dog. And I was like, no, nah, I can't do that. Even if he was like, a, they tried to take James to a surfer dude or something like that. And he was like, yo, dude, morphine is totally bad for you. I'd be like, that fucking sucks butt Steve too. You know what I'm saying? So for them to do that, when I heard his voice, I was super pleasantly surprised. Because when you see the face, you hear a certain voice. And I'm super pleasantly surprised that it seems like he sort of talks normal. Or like Bill Skarsgård always talks kind of weird shit. But like... Like, I'm hoping that they keep it that way. And he's like, like, I'm the crow dog. I came back from the dead. What's up? Say how to your mother for me. <laughs> Fucking Mark Wahlberg crow. Hey, I'm the crow, you guys. What's going on? I just died, but I came back and I was going to see if I could kill you guys. And we were going to get married and have a good time. We were going to eat turkey burgers together. Look at my friend, the crow. It's a bird. That's my fucking bird up there. Danny Houston, as a bad guy, knew he would be a great bad guy. He's he's good in, in everything he's in, especially playing the dick face. He just has that stepdad who owns a Fortune 500 company face or stepdad who owns a string of Dairy Queens across the state face. That's Danny Houston. So the amount of times that crow got fucked up in that trailer like shot up and stuff like that and they sort of john wicked it a little bit but i'm into the violence you know especially when you have that physically intimidating of a crow i'm super into the violence uh and the way that you know they did sort of john wicked a little bit but not too much i mean he wasn't running around spinning triple double flip headshots or anything he just used the gun quite a bit killed quite a few folks and they really played up the I cannot be killed thing. I feel like a lot in that trailer. But the scenes look cool. The action looked cool. Uh, not a fan of the vibe. But I will say as I sit here, I am way... I lost all hope and belief after seeing those pictures. All of it. Like The Crow's not a fucking mumble rapper. I'm sorry. And it's a, it's a pissing on... Uh, what uh, Eric Draven and Brandon Lee put together in that first movie and that character, in my opinion, to name this character Eric, Dra Eric Draven and then change so many fundamental things about his personality. You know, um, I thought just change the name, like I said. But that being said, where I sit here now, I'm still super skeptical. That trailer could not have been better. C compared to the picture that we saw, the trailer itself could not have been better to actually reinstill, I won't call it faith, but I'll call it hope. And that's where I sit with this trailer. So 
I love and I love the violence in the trailer. Like the I I'm not hundred percent sure. Tell me what you guys saw there. Was that CG blood that we're looking at? Because some of the blood spatters look cool. Like a, a, a shotgun to the face in a trailer is a surprise. It reminded me of Scream Six, by the way. Only they actually showed it. So some of the gnarly shots in there, I was impressed with. But also that kind of I kind of thought out of my mind's eye, I saw some bad CGI blood in a couple scenes, and that's gonna be you don't want that. Not in a movie. Like, if this is going straight to DVD, fucking fine. You know, but I, I really hope that that's not... my Mine didn't capture what I thought my mind captured in those moments, for sure. Can it overcome that aesthetic and that awful, awful choice of aesthetic looks? If you just look at him from the front and just pretend he doesn't have face tattoos, I sound like a girl in a bar who just, like, really is lonely and just considering taking it to home a face tattoo guy. If you just look at him with one eye closed, Becca, he's not that bad. And think about how much money's in his bank. Yeah, if you just look at him from the front at certain angles, he looks badass. Even with the terrible choice to do the the skull thing instead of the, the standard look, he does look pretty badass. But then as soon as he turns his head or you look at his face tattoos, you're like, oh, God, there it is. So I'm just having trouble with it. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it was an awful, awful choice. Uh, I'm imagining if this trailer came out right now and the crow looked like the fucking crow, I'd be on cloud fucking nine, man. It would be one of my most anticipated movies of the year. And that's coming from a movie that probably shouldn't even be at this point. But here we are. We're going to try to stay positive as much as we can. And uh, hopefully they, they didn't see the backlash of the look of the crow and then just hid all that Joker, you want beef shit out of the trailer. Um, we can keep our fingers crossed, Freddy, for that. So what did you guys think about it? I'm sure it's going to be controversial no matter what. That's just my honest take on, upon first reaction. Let it waft over me a little bit more. I'm going to eat some waffles. I'm going to re-energize a little bit. I'm going to choose to eat over here, and uh, I'll rejoin you after breakfast. I love your all's fucking faces. I hope you guys have an amazing day, and we'll see you soon. Here comes that white-faced fucker, an asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit. Wants to stab your sister's tits because he's a white-faced fucker. Loomis can't recover. Dr. Challenge drunk again, sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you want to know about the darkness? I said God damn. God damn you, my God. Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS.